Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 78, Guard Plugins, Bundler, and RSpec. In this episode, you'll learn how to install Guard as part of Guard Bundler, and then how to install and configure Guard RSpec. If you want to code along, you'll just need a Rails app with RSpec already set up. I'll be showing the configuration for the invoice app that I created last year. So what is Guard? Guard automates various tasks by running custom rules whenever file or directories are modified. It's frequently used by software developers, web designers, writers, and other specialists to avoid mundane, repetitive actions and commands such as relaunching tools after changing source files or configurations. So basically, it's watching you work and running certain commands that you've set up. One of the strengths of Guard is that it has a huge plugin ecosystem. You can find all these plugins either by visiting rubygems.org and searching for Guard Dash. That'll show you really how popular each of these plugins are. Or you can look at the Guard Wiki and it breaks it up by use case. Today I'm going to go over two of the plugins that are used most often, Bundler and RSpec. So for Guard Bundler, we're going to add the Guard Bundler gem to our gem file. And then we're going to bundle for the last time on this project. Then we're going to initialize the guard config, which adds a guard file to your project. And in this guard file, it'll already have the tasks for bundler because we're using guard init bundler. And then to start up guard to watch what you're doing, you will run bundle exec guard. And I recommend having this in a separate terminal or tab because you are still going to need to run commands and guard needs to be running in that separate terminal. Opening up our project in our text editor, I'm going to the gem file to add that into our development group and then saving that. And now I will bundle it for the very last time. And if you scroll up, you see that it adds guard and guard bundler. You don't have to add the guard gem first, but if you wanted to, you could. And now we're initializing guard and you see that it's added a guard file to the root of the project. And let's take a look. And you see it's added guard bundler and you see it's added all of the tasks needed for bundler to run as soon as you change your gem file. Now I'm running the bundle exec guard and it checked the gem file and it's already up to date. Okay, and then it gives you a prompt. So you can run different things in this prompt as well or it will automatically start running things when you change your files. More on that later. Next, we're gonna add guard RSpec. So again, we'll add guard RSpec to our development group and we will run the clan guard init RSpec. Then I'll add those tasks to our existing guard file. And I'll show you what it looks like to begin with and then how I changed it to work more with what I already had in my existing app. So here we are again in our gem file and I'm going to add that and save. But then, then when I hop back over to my terminal, I can see that guard has already run bundler for me. So then here in my other terminal, right, you see it's a different tab, I'm going to guard init rspec, and that added to the guard file. So let's check it out. Opening it up, we scroll on down, and we see the new information. All right, so this is templated. Uh, you may need to change some of this. Um, it's looking for where people usually put their testing files. And you can see that guard has actually already restarted because it's config changed and it does that automatically now, which is great. Some of the documentation said you had to restart guard, but now it does it automatically. Looking again at this config, you can see that it has different sections for the Rails files, Ruby files, other Rails files, and it'll be checking the views and running tests for the controller, an area to check if your configs change for RSpec and you need to run the test then, a section to watch your feature tests, and a section for turnip, which I don't really use, but there it is if you do. So I put the terminal side by side here. Let's make a small change just to see it in action. So I have a model test that's testing for some validations. I know it's a little small there, but it's testing to make sure it has uh, uniqueness and presence. So let's go ahead to our invoice model. And right now I'm just going to comment out validating the presence of different attributes. And it's going to save and then it starts running my spec for my invoice model. And I'm going to speed it up for time. 
and you see a whole bunch of failures. And there we go. And there's a little notification, which I like. There is a configuration where you can turn that off, but it's kind of nice. Then when I go back and correct my mistake and save, then it's going to run it again. And this time, everything passes. Now, when I started this project, I did not have guard in mind, so I did not name my files to match up with the naming convention for guard. And so it's not running any of my feature specs when I change those things because the naming really matters. So for me, for now, I'm going to have it run all of my feature specs whenever my views change, my layouts change, or my controllers change. Because that's my workflow. Yours could be different. So again, be sure to read through these and understand that it's looking for the exact names of the files before it runs those specs that match up. So now when I change a view to break it, I'm going to take out the sign in button so it breaks. And then when I hop back over to the terminal, you'll see that it's running all of the spec features. And I've cut to the end of this and you see now that they're failing. And you see that it now no longer finds that sign in button. Now this is great because it's guarding you against breaking other parts of your application. Probably if I'm just trying to work on one feature, I'm going to go into my other terminal and run that spec by itself as well. And then go back and look at guard and see what it says, see if I've broken anything else. So now I've gone in and fixed my view back and so it's running all the spec features again. Now in my workflow, I'm like, okay, let's move on to the next while it's checking that out. I'm going to look here and okay, I'm going to change this right now and see what happens. It's still running my all of my spec features and it's going to finish that task before running the next task. So you'll see now it's running just that feature spec that I edited. So when you're working just on the spec itself, it's going to run that one spec. When you change files in the views or anything, it's going to run all the specs and it'll do each task in a row. So you may need to kind of wait and make sure everything runs before you're like, okay, everything's good to go. It may be doing the next one as you're working. So there we go. It's green on that now as well that we fixed it back. Again, just a couple of tips just to be aware that Guard restarts on its own once you've changed its configuration. And then to run all the specs because maybe you're done with a particular feature and you've changed a few things, but you want to make sure everything's good to go. All you need to do to run all the specs is hit enter on your keyboard. So if we come back to the terminal and I hit enter, now it's running all of them. And for time, I have just skipped to the end and you can see all of my results. Everything's passing. Here are a couple of resources. Be sure to check out the different command line options. It can show your guard output in different ways. So go and check those out. And here are the links directly to the guard bundler and guard R spec gems to see what different configurations they have. I will be working more with guard on this invoice app. So if I have any other tips or things that come up that end up not working for me, be sure to check the notes down below and I'll just add them there. Thanks for watching. If you're not on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up where you can find out when I post Ruby snacks and also when I do some live coding as well as other fun projects. If you are not subscribed on YouTube, go ahead and click that big red Ruby to do so. Folks on YouTube do get the email saying, hey, I've posted a new video sooner than everybody else. And here are some other videos that you might enjoy. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.